rejoice and be glad. But we forget that it's the day that the Lord has made. It's not a day that we made. And we have our list and it bumps up against what God, God's list, what the day that God has made. So it becomes a tug of war because we want our way and God will have his way because it is a day that he has made. God honors his word to perform it. Where we get in trouble, we don't realize that the enemy, Satan, listen and pays attention to disrupt it. And we, a lot of times, just totally miss because we got into a rut in repeating and we don't hear it anymore. We don't listen anymore because we think we know it. And we think, okay, I sing it, I read it, I hear it. So, but it's become a common to us sometimes. So we miss what the Holy Spirit is asking us. How was your day? It's not my day, but a God day. So God is asking us each day, how was your day? You know, God, he, God has his word already established. He has it made. He, ha he created it. He designed it for each of us. All of us, God says, okay, I call your name in the morning, you wake up. But after that, your day can, in the same household, your day can go in any direction because God designed the day specifically for each of us. And we tend to get really upset when God messes with my day. We're going to look at some individuals of how God messed with their day and see how their reaction and see how God got them to change a negative day, my day, to a God day. But first of all, we're going to define made as made. Because if we don't understand what has made is about, we will never understand part A is the day that God has made. In order to get to B, I will rejoice and be glad in it. We have to understand the first part. It says to, so made is defined as the past tense of make. It means to have been produced, fashioned, or built out of materials or components. It also describes something as having built in a certain way or something that is guaranteed to have success or good fortune in the future. So the day that God has made is designed to bring us good fortune in the future because he knows the plans he has for us. He knows that it, what he has designed will bring us to our full potential. It's a gift that he gives us each day so that we can rejoice and be glad in our day. You know, this is a couple of examples as to how we look at the day and how God look at his day. If you go to a car dealership looking for a car, a car is already made. It has the seats, it has the lights, it has everything that is needed for that car to work the way it needs to work. And that's the God day. You know, three people can go to the same lot and we'll pick something totally different because God designed us that way. But it's still a God day because that vehicle should work and will work because of the design that it has, it's created, it's made. So it should just do what it needs to do. 
we go, a lot of times we have, you go buy a recipe book and, and the chef has made recipes and said, okay, this will taste like this. This will be this. But as soon as we get home, sometimes we look at that recipe and say, Hmm, I don't like that spice. I don't like that. Oh, that's got too much pepper in there. That's got too much something on the other. Oh, I, so we change it or want to change it to accommodate us. And we tend to want to do that with God's word too. We want to change God's word, you know, as um, a seamstress and sewing for people, they go by a dress or skirt or something. And they're like, oh, I like that. So I bought it. But now I got it home. I want to change it. I want to shorten it. I want to lengthen it. I want to change the buttons on it. I want to do something to it because I want it to be more me. And we tend to want to do God's word the same way. So there we get in a lot of trouble because God's word has been established and it ain't changing for you or for me. You know, um, if we look at in the, at the book of Daniel, you know, the Medes and the Persians, they had this thing, you know, it will not be changed. The law will not be changed because of the Medes and Persians because that's the way they were. But when you read Daniel, and after they put him in the lion's den because he prayed, by verse 26 in that same chapter, they had changed it. They had changed their laws and their rules because the it was according to the means and portion. It wasn't according to God's law or God's rule. So we have to be careful that we have a God day and not a my day. Because a my day is kind of selfish. And it affects relationships, affects your relationship with God. If you're married, it affects your, your relationship with your spouse, with your kids. Because each of us, we want our way or my day instead of a God day. And a God day is better than any other day. So when we give the Holy Spirit true power to guide us that tug of war goes away so we come into a god day we're going to look at some people that god interrupted arrested their day and see how they reacted to that first we're going to look at moses moses was born in egypt in during slavery, killed a man, ran to the back of the desert, got married, and he was looking after his father-in-law sheep. For almost 40 years, Moses was hiding in the back of the desert. Till he came up on God's timeline, and God says, Okay, it's time for you to be the deliverer. Because now you've come up to my day, the God day, not on my day. And Moses started arguing with God, making excuses because he's like, God, I like my day. You know, find somebody else. Look, my brother, he's he's up front. He's a priest. Choose him. Leave me so I can kind of keep my day and not be bothered. And God said, who created the day? Who created your mouth? Who created Remember who's in charge. So Moses went, he had attitude, and we tend to have attitudes with God too when we don't want to do what God has ordained, designed, and destined us for sometimes. See, Moses didn't realize the that he was going to deliver a nation and the harvest that was part of that deliverance. Two million plus souls was his harvest that he did not even recognize. But he went and God used him mightily. Next, 
we're going to look at Jonah. Now, Jonah had him a my day, and he did not want to change a my day to a God day. He told God, I am not even hearing you. I am going my way. I'm going in the opposite direction because I don't like what you're doing because you're going to save those people that I don't want saved. And God says, well, it's a God day, not a my day. So God interrupted his day. God arrested his day. And then got Jonah to go and save 120,000 people, plus those that were on the ship that he was running to, running from God in. And even at the end, when God saved the nation, Jonah was still complaining about God, why? I still want my day. I don't like what you've done. I don't think I'm going to like what you did. So, but it turned out to have a God day because God had designed that day and that process was already made and the salvation was in place. So, Jonah rescued a nation. We're going to look at Mary. Um, the scriptures for Jonah was Jonah 1, 1 to 16, and 4, verses 1 to 11. Mary is Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 55. When the angel came to Mary, she didn't understand. So she was she had a my day, but she said, okay, God, I'm going to change, swap my day for your day. And she said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Because even though I don't understand, I know who you are. I know that you created me for a purpose. I know you created this day to let me know that you chose me for a purpose to be, to represent you in giving, bringing your son into the world. So Mary she acknowledged that to Jesus, the world would be saved. Billions of people. She had the right attitude for God day, even though she didn't understand. She gave up her, my day, her day, for a God day. Then we come to the question uh, why do bad things happen to good people? We ask ourselves that. We, we say, okay, God, I'm a believer. I trust you. But why is, a, why is bad things happening? I think we should change that and ask God, God, what are you doing? Why did my day go from just being a good day, peaceful day to, uh, this is a book I, um, when I worked at the library, that the kids would love to, to be read to them on Wednesdays and Saturdays when we had kid day. It is called The Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very, Very Bad Day. And when I, when that came to my memory, I, I looked at Job. Job had one of those days. In Job chapter 1, verses 1 through 22, and through 2, verses 1 through 10, he had a very, very bad day. Before one thing, you get the news of something bad happening, here comes the next one his kids, his crops, his cattle, everything was taken away in one day. But you know what he said? He said in chapter 19, verse 25 to 29, he said, I know my Redeemer lives. 
the, that was a personal relationship that he had with God that he could say, I know my Redeemer lives. So his day could have been a my day, but he said, no, I'm going to make it a God day because my Redeemer lives. No matter what is happening, I know the one I can lean on, call on, and trust in. So, when we're dealing with difficult times, are we, do we know that our Redeemer lives? Or we're going to go with, woe is me, day. Next, we're going to look at David. David was a nobody before he killed Goliath. When Samuel came to anoint the king, came to his father's house to anoint the king, they didn't even bring him forward. He was, they had to wait and go call him because he wasn't even recognized as important in his family. And sometimes when that happens to us, we have a my day instead of a God day. When he went to take his brother's food, they said, what are you doing here? You need to be back washing the sheep. He said, I'm not doing anything. I just came to be a blessing to you. And when Goliath made his challenge, David knew who his God was and how God directed his day was to give him victory. But David's life did not go smoothly. He, the king that said, come to my palace, was the king that chased him and tried to kill him. David's son, Absalom, wanted to take over the kingship from his dad. So David had to run from him. So all through this, David did not curse God. He did not fret. As he said, God, in Psalms 139, he said, God, if I ran to the ends of the earth, you are there. If I go to hell, you are there. If I go to heaven, you are there. So I know I can trust you. I can lean on you mm -hmm. no matter what my day looks like. Next, we're going to look at Saul to Paul. Paul, as we know him, he was a Pharisee, and he tried to destroy the church that Christ had started to Peter and the Christians. And Paul's main thing was to destroy the body of Christ. He went and got letters from the leaders and he would go kill the Christians. And he was on his way to Damascus because he had just stood by the stone Stephen. So Paul, he, he was having, a, he thought he was having a good day that God said, I rest you today. I'm going to change from your day, my day, to a God day. Because I've got something for you to do that you don't even comprehend. And Paul saw first, he said, okay, God, I'm going to acknowledge you, that you're the one that's powerful. You're the one that would guide me lead me. So for three years he went in the desert and just God ministered to him to get him on the way he should go. And then Paul he got before the Lord one day and he said, God, I have this problem. I have this torn in the flesh and I really, really would like you to take it away. God said, that's not part of my day. <laughs> for you. So he said, but my grace is sufficient to keep you 
because I want you to always look towards me, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, to keep your day focused. So when you go to you're in jail, when you're stoned, when you're shipwrecked, when you're bitten by a snake, all these things. Are you going to still say it's a God day or a my day? And Paul got hold of that. And no matter what they did to him, he said, God, it is your day. It is a God day. And I will follow you. I will keep going. Even in my weakness, I will not lean on my day but I will lean on a God day. So as we look at those individuals and see how they responded to what was happening in their life, how can we get ready for, we will rejoice and be glad in it part. Because now that we know that it's the day that God has made, we can see that we can learn to rejoice and be glad in it, no matter what comes our way. So to get ready, we have to get dressed properly. And getting dressed properly requires God's armor. Every part of the armor. I'm not going to go through all the pieces of it, because in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 gives us the armor. But so each day we need to get dressed in it to make sure that there's no weak areas. There's no, as you would say, in the military when we had our armor, you had to make sure it was clean. It was your helmets were, didn't have your straps were, were just stretched out too much where it wouldn't fit you properly. You know, everything, your gas mask, every part of your armor, you have to make sure that it's in good work and order. And God has given us his armor in good work and order. And we just have to get dressed in it so that it protects us from the darts of the enemy. So he can't penetrate to make a God day a my day. One one thing in here also, when we, each day when we put on the armor, we need to pray in Psalms 122, 6 through 9, the peace of Jerusalem. Because in praying for the peace of Jerusalem, we pray for peace for ourselves too. Because just like Jerusalem is under attack, we are under attack daily by the enemy. And God has asked us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Because it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May there be peace within your walls and prosperity within your fortresses. When we have on God's armor, we are like Superman. When we don't have God's armor, we're like Clark Kent. Can't do nothing, get beat up. But when we put on God's armor, the Holy Spirit power is on us and it flows to us and it gives us strength because we recognize that God is in charge and not us. So as we dress each piece will do its work because God's armor is alive. It's not something that is dead. And it flows with you. Wherever God sends you, his armor goes with you to protect you if you wear it and put it on properly. Next, you have to look at what we eat. You know, in Matthew, um, in the Lord's Prayer, we say, God, give us this day our daily bread. 
It's Matthew 6, 9 to 11. Earlier I said that God honors his word to perform it. And in the Lord's prayer, health, food, protection, grace, mercy. He says mercies are new every day. Lamentations 3.22. So what is daily bread? A lot of times we look at it as something just in the natural. Which is good because God will provide that also. Just like he provided for the Israelites in the desert. He provided manna for them. But most times... It is a spiritual daily bread. And sometimes we get into a legalistic battle with God because we said, okay, I'm going to study the book of the Exodus today or this week or this month. And God might say today, no, I want you to study John 3.16 today. And you say, but God, let's see, I I want to study, finish studying Exodus before I move on to something else. And God is saying, no, because today, a God day, you need John 3.16 instead of Exodus. Sometimes God will allow us to wake up late or because sometimes we set an alarm and then we get up and we're like, I know I set the alarm. Why didn't it go off? Because God wants you in his day. And he wants to pull out the treasure of his word that you have hidden in your heart to feast on. Because if you determine that you're going to stay your day, your plan, God is saying, I'm going to rest your day because my plan must bear fruit and will bear fruit because it's a day that I have made and I want you to rejoice and be glad in it. Sometimes we hold on too tight to what we think we know and we miss out on God's benefits, his grace, his mercy, the feast that he has given, into, has given to us. daily bread it consists of a relationship because and first of all that relationship must be between you and God because if it you don't have that relationship between you and God the rest will not work there are rules also just like God had rules for the children of Israel when they collected the manna he said each day this is we pick up just so much for that day, except for the day before the Sabbath, we collect for two days. Some of them didn't listen, and they collected more than the laws God has set in place, and it rotted, and it spoiled. When things like that happen, we get mad at God because we're like, Okay, God, why did this happen to me? But we did not obey what God told us to do. To have a God day calls for obedience. People that God puts in our path to witness to, to pray for, to bless, we need to be obedient in that because that's your harvest for that day and maybe for a lifetime who knows and then there's the relaxing part of your day because then we get so busy that we don't stop to appreciate the day that the Lord has made and today with the Sabbath we stop and we are studying his word and we're enjoying the benefit of that day 
Now in Genesis 3, 8, it says that God met with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. You have to know what part of the day is the cool of the day for you. But during that time that he met, it was almost like a debriefing of that day, of what he did. Okay, Adam. So you should tend the garden. You know, name the animals. Name the birds. Tell me what you did today. Did you enjoy what you did today? Now, each day, when you meet with God, it becomes part of that Sabbath rest for the day. Each day can have its own Sabbath rest. Just like the end of the seventh day when God rested, and it's a Sabbath, each day when you meet with God, it is also a Sabbath rest. Because God wants to love on you. He wants you to just rest by the quiet waters and just walk through those green pastures. Psalm 23. And he said, you know, I'm your shepherd. I'm going to take care of you because I want you to have a God day, a day that you can rejoice and be glad in it. And then next, he wants you to remind, to renew your mind daily. Because when you renew your mind daily, you hide that word in your heart so you can feast on it, eat on it. That part, go back to the eating part. In Ephesians 4.23, it talks about renewing that. In Romans 12.2, it also talks about don't be conformed to the world, but renew your mind. But trans be transformed to the renewing of your mind. And then in 1 Peter, Peter 1, 13, it says, therefore prepare your minds for action. Be sober-minded and set your hope fully on God. And when we do that, we renew our minds. We draw closer to God. And in drawing closer to God, we can have a God day and not a very bad day because God's day is finished. It is complete. It is for us is victorious because he's given us the victory. When Christ died on the cross, Christ says it is finished. Just like each day is finished. And if we Give up a my day for a God day. We have redemption. We have salvation. And that is found in Luke 22, 30, 9 to 44, or John 19 to 30. And it's because he loves us so much. It's John 3, 16. He loves the whole world. He wants us to give up a my day for a God day. So my question to you today, as we finish, how was your day? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm finished. <laughs> I always tell others to unmute themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. Minister Outstanding, Rosalind. outstanding, outstanding. Bellamy, mm -hmm. praise God. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. was your day? And then Minister Garnett came and said, this is a yes. day that the Lord yes. has made. Yes. I took so many notes. Uh, yes. For those of you who have never met Minister Rosalind uh, personally, uh, we were members of the same church and she's always been soft-spoken. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking today, Minister Rosalind, I said, I hope she gets into the mic so that we can hear her. 
<laughs> well, we heard you loud and clear. She's very soft spoken, but she's a woman of God who spends much, much, much time in the word and in the Lord. And she just loves it. She started off by talking about if you're making a garment and you're cutting it and sewing it and you're trying to tailor it to fit you. I just want to say that Minister Rosalind is a seamstress. <laughs> she does make clothing. She knows how to cut and make it fit. So I thought that was a good opening. God always <laughs> allows us to take what we do uh, on a daily basis or our hobbits, and he'll show us a spiritual truth within the hobbies that we pick. Well, I took a lot of notes, but I don't want to dominate. So if you want to make a comment on the lesson, if you if you learned anything, uh, if you want to ask a question, this is a time that we dialogue and we're going to do it until 530. It's 5.02 right now. So if you want to make a comment, raise your hand and speak. Amen. Minister Linda, you... You unmuted, but is your is your hand up? You want to make a comment? Yeah, she just no, unmuted. I, I oh, did I okay. do something? Yeah, you unmuted. When y'all unmute, that means you want to speak. <laughs> uh, Cheryl Franklin, you are unmuted. Did you have a comment? Sister Michelle Reed, you are unmuted. Did you have a comment on the lesson? I do. I don't know how to raise my hand, so I just unmute it. <laughs> well, that's good. Hey, well, what it all works. All of it yes, works. Man. So go ahead. Well, this is it uh... was it was very beautiful. Um and I was over here. Um she was cutting real good. Well, the word was cutting real good. Uh, because yeah. it went right along with our that's the Sunday school lesson we had at uh church because it went for me, it just went along with um how was my day because we were we we're talking about unthankfulness in our respectable sins book and a lot of times we're trucking along and things happen and instead of being grateful for the things that we have we want to complain and moan and groan about stuff instead of okay lord what do you want me to get out of this what what's really going on what are you where are you trying to take me and mm -hmm. We were discussing how that's how for me that's how I used to be and now I've grown to where it's like okay what's the lesson what's the lesson in this Lord where where am I going where are you directing me with this right here that's going on and so when you were saying you know how is my day that's how now I can use that now I have a new terminology for what's going on with stuff when it's going bad Oh, okay, I'm going to have a God day. All right, Lord. All right, I'm holding on. So where are you taking me? So thank you. I, that's a wonderful way of saying things now. And um, I, I just really appreciated it. And it's a different way to look at these Bible stories as well. Um, so that was just a beautiful analogy for me on looking mm -hmm. at these. Thank you so Amen. very, very much. And Amen. I won't change my cooking recipes anymore because I, I I'm one of those cookers, and I'm like, oh no, uh, are you what? You put paprika in that? Who ever heard of such a thing? So yes, ma'am, that's me. That's me. <laughs> uh, Minister Bellamy, I I can't tell you how many times. Well, I'm looking at my notes, and I circled the word. I wrote it down, and I circled it uh, four times, and that's and five times, and that's arrested arrested you said that many times and i circle it after the second time i started circling god arrested his day and and you you spoke about the characters of moses and jonah and job and you know begin to make excuses to why they couldn't do what god was calling them to do and god said this is not your day this 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 is my day and that really ministered to me it ministered to me because especially lately I've been doing things that I've never done before. Well, I've never been called on to do before. And when the idea comes or when I am asked to do it, I'm so accustomed to saying, that's not my calling. You know, I do that. Never done that before. And thank you, Minister Bellamy. Thank you. Because God is arresting my life. 
He's arresting not only my day, but stop saying what you cannot do because if God ordains that day and he lays it on your heart to do something, it's his day. So I like what you said. We can't uh, fit our, uh, uh, we can't, we have to fit in God's day. We don't try to make God fit in our day. We need to fit ourselves in his day. Thank you so much. That word arrested is going to linger with me. Amen. Sister uh, Shelly, you had your name, you, you had your hand up and, and then Sister Mary Jane. Okay. So I just want to say another word that Roz used uh, uh, several times during the teaching was uh, designed, right? So I think about it, God designs the day and, you know, it, how, who am I to think that I can think of a better design than God? I mean, God's the best design. I think about, uh, you know, somebody that might be a seamstress and me trying to do a dress, I'd probably have, you know, one one piece up here, one piece down there, because I'm not good at that, right? So God's a great designer. And I think in, in I, I'm going to do something new when I wake up in the morning and ask God, you know, Lord, what have you got designed for me to, in this day? Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. That's beautiful. Lord, what, what, what have you designed for me today? That's fitting yourself into God's day. And and uh, that's what I'm getting from this lesson. Uh, Minister Mayor Jane, you had your hand up. Yes, ma'am. Um, when she, uh, uh, Minister Bellamy, when you brought up Psalms 122 mm. and praying for the peace of Jerusalem, I did not see it until you said God's day, where mm. he says, um, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be at peace. He's That's a God day a day of peace and then you yeah. say and then it says uh may there be shalom within your walls quietness within your palaces those are god days for me because as i'm praying for the peace of jerusalem then within my walls my inner walls there's peace and in in my and then there's the peace and the quietness in god so that's how i see it as being a god day that i took from um, Psalms 122, the praying for Amen. Jerusalem. Thank you for opening that up for me. Amen. Thank you, Sister Mayor Jane. Um, Sister Cheryl Franklin, is your hand up? You're unmuted. Do you have... And we see half of your head, Sister Cheryl. <laughs> Did, are you trying to make comments or are you just waving and listening? Just waving at you. I got on late, but I'm on. Thank God. Okay, praise God. It's good to see you. Good, good to, to see, see you, you Sister well. Annette Williams. She finally got on. <laughs> Does anybody else have any thoughts or comments on the lesson? I even wrote down, um, Sister Bellamy, I wrote down, I know your title was, How Was Your Day? But in the middle of your uh, teaching, I wrote down, Whose Day Is It? <laughs> you, you know, if we get up in the mornings and we ask ourselves, okay, whose day is it? I mean, I that's... Those are some thought provoking, uh, you know, those are thought provoking. And, and when things don't go our way, we have to stop and, and, and ask ourselves, okay, whose day is it? Am I in, in, am I in God's day or am I trying to fit him in my day? Yeah. Amen. You know, um, I, I struggle with that title too, because I want to put what you said and the Holy Spirit said, no. Y yeah. How was your day that is amen so amen amen said, and you always awesome. amen as ministers and as uh, as ministers of the gospel you always go with the thought that god gives you but you know when you're bringing a message god god speaks to us you you know he's speaking to us while you were teaching so perhaps yeah. he was asking me okay whose day is it and and i'm gonna get up every morning and and that provokes us minister bellamy it provokes us to want to be in god's day and make sure that that's where we are sister davida you're unmuted and i want to thank you for that because it helps me to remember that it's not about me it's all about god and I have to put myself on the path that this is God's day and whatever he plans for me, whatever he has for me that day, it's for his glory. It's not for me. So I have to walk the path that he wants me to walk. Because when I try to walk my own path, it never goes right. 
So I need to make sure that I ask the same or say to myself, this is God's day. So I have to do what God wants me to do, not what I want to do. And a lot of times I have been thinking, you know, I need to do this. I need to do that. But it's not me. It's God. So thank you for that, for reminding me of that. Amen. Thank you, Sister Davida. I, that that message spoke to all of us, and and we're all taking away uh, something from that message. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Minister Rosalind, Pastor Tatum. You unmuted, and then you muted. You muted back again. I would like to hear what was in your heart when you unmuted before you muted back. <laughs> no, I think I've been moving around my uh, okay. thing, so I've just been trying to make sure there's not sound in the background. <laughs> okay. You're good. We're not hearing it. Uh, Sister Rosalind said something else that kind of uh, triggered my spirit. She said, and this is the way I wrote it, each day that we meet with God, when, when, when God met with Adam in the cool of the day, and I wrote down that you said each day that we meet with God can be a, like a Sabbath. It's a rest. And uh I, we always look at Sabbath, for those of us who have studied the Sabbath, we look at Sabbath as Saturday, from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. That's the Sabbath. And that's the day that God commanded us to rest. But then you brought about another perspective, Minister Bellamy. You said each day we meet with, with God, you know, can be a Sabbath. And I thought about that. I said, hmm. I said, hmm. And it took me back, Sister Williams, to when I taught the feast days of God. You know, the, the seven feast days of God, all of those feast days don't fall on a Saturday. But when they fall, if it falls on a Wednesday or if it falls on a Thursday, it can fall in the middle of the week. The Bible regards that particular day as a Sabbath of Sabbaths. It's, it's regarded as a Sabbath, even if it doesn't fall on a Saturday. Are y'all, are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. So a Sabbath of Sabbaths. And I often wonder why, why they call it a Sabbath of Sabbaths. It's not even a Saturday. Well, because they're, they're into God's rest. So thank you, Sister Bellamy, Minister Bellamy, for bringing that out. Hallelujah. This is great. This is great. Well, Minister Annette, you always have something to say. I don't know if you caught any of the message at all, but say hi and you're looking good and, and you're going to enter into his rest on this day. The, the enemy thinks that he had the victory over you, but the devil is a liar because you're going to listen to, amen, you're going to listen to the tape. He you're going to listen to. He thought he ahead. had me, but I entered into his rest. I said, I don't know what this is all about. <laughs> I don't know why I can't get on, but you are not going to get me upset. So amen. I just settled myself calm myself down and just did something to keep me calm and said, okay, God, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And I didn't get on until five minutes to five. So I apologize. <laughs> I missed everything, but well, to God be the glory. I was man. going to persevere to give the enemy a black eye. I say, I will go on. I don't care what time it is. Amen. Amen. Well, we're glad you persevered, uh, Sister Annette. And we knew you were trying to get on. So thank you it's, so it's, much. It's it's all good. Okay. Does anybody else have a thought on today's lesson? Because I sure wrote down a whole bunch of stuff. Sister Linda, I'm surprised you haven't unmuted yet. <laughs> I like what you said about God's day is designed to bring us good fortune, plans to prosper us. If we wake up in the morning with that thought in mind, we already know whose day it is. If God has purpose in that day, if he's designed that day to bring us good fortune, to bring us peace, to bring us uh, plans, to prosper us, that's how he has designed the day. But how many times we get up and you heard the expression, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. And we use it as an excuse to why your attitude is bad that day. Well, you know what? We can flip it, you know, flip it now. No, this is God's day. God has yeah. designed this day for me. Yeah. God has designed to prosper me in this day and it's going to go well. So we're going to talk to ourselves differently, Sister Bellamy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Am I unmuted? 
Yes, you are. <laughs> Finally, I've just been playing around with this little button for quite some time now. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> but uh, thank you, uh, Minister Bellamy. Bellamy, that was beautiful. Uh, let me say this. I I love the way um, Minister Terry brought us into this lesson. Mm -hmm. That, mm -hmm. in my opinion, that was the key right there. She set the stage for what we were going to hear today and the way she made a melody out of those songs. It was just beautiful and just the way uh, Minister Bellamy, just, Bellamy came in and just laid the groundwork for us, Man. you know. And and before she when she when she started teaching in my mind I was thinking wow this is wonderful you know the question the way she proposed uh, the question how was your day I mean that that in my opinion was very uh, it, it was a very leading question right because mm -hmm. we had no idea where she was coming from and so mm -hmm. in my mind I was saying okay so yeah this is uh, this is after Mr Terry was singing yeah well this is the Lord's day but she's asking yeah. how was your day. And, and so I had to back up and tell myself, no, we have to keep the main thing, the main thing. We wouldn't have a day if it were mm -hmm. not for the grace of God, right? So when we wake up in the morning, we thank God for this day. But from her teaching, not just this day, God, we thank you for your day, allowing Amen. us to be a part of your day. And in that day, Please direct our steps. And she just laid all this stuff out for us to help us to reorganize our day and realize that during the course of that day, if we get off track, remember, it's not your day. Get back on track with God. Keep the Amen. main thing, the main thing. Keep our, mm -hmm. I don't care what comes our way to take us off that path. If you just keep get back to the thought of the main thing and it's all about God and all about Amen. pleasing God. And so, yes, I was just so blessed by that. Thank you, Minister Bellamy. Amen. 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 And amen. Okay, we're not going to force comments if you don't have any. Uh, you committee members, you know who you are. We usually stay after the teaching. Sister Bellamy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we're going to we're gonna look forward to hearing from you again. You're a facilitator now. <laughs> And if the Lord lays anything on anybody's heart, you, give, you know, give me a call. I, I uh, handle the schedule. Praise God. You're all ministers. Well, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, Sister Minister Linda Romero will take, you know what? You know what? I'm going to divert. I'm going to ask okay. Minister Annette Williams to close us out in prayer. I think that's amen. a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Minister Annette, amen. We're going to beat the devil down. So, amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, oh God, for this day that you've made. We thank you, oh God, for the clarity through the message and through the woman of God who brought it to our attention, oh God, that it is all about you. Yes. Father, I thank you for these women who are represented on this line, oh God. Bless them, bless their household and everything that they put their hands to do, oh God. I ask that you would replenish uh, the speaker, oh God, and allow us, oh God, to assemble again on the fourth Saturday, oh God, to eat and glean from your word, for you yes, are truly yes. worthy. So may the Lord bless and keep us until we meet again. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we'll uh, Amen. we'll meet again. Amen. We'll meet again in another couple of weeks, and we will hear from our own Pastor Leona Tatum, sister of uh, Sister Annette. Pastor Leona Tatum will be speaking to us on uh, Saturday, February the twenty fourth, and she'll be talking on cultivating faithfulness cultivating faithfulness and her main scripture is matthew 17 and 20 we could be ready Thank pastor you. tatum <laughs> okay god Thank bless you. you all shabbat shalom the lord bless you shalom. and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you his peace this train Amen. is leaving the station. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, Bree. Bye, everybody. Bye. Gone. Bye. <laughs>